This is a Sports Radio Live podcast covering your world of sports. Brian Houston Sports Radio Live. It's weekdays at 3 on 99.3 Talk FM, the talk of East Texas. The NFL Scouting Combine begins on Wednesday, February 22nd and uh, and continues on uh, Tuesday, February the 28th. And one of the gentlemen who puts the players through their paces to get them ready for the Combine is a former Dallas Cowboy, a Texas high school football player in the uh, Hall of Fame, and uh, also a longtime NFL coach. And that's Jerry Rome on the APEC VIP hotline, cutting-edge training for the serious athlete, apecgo.com. Jerry, thank you very much for being on with us. How you doing? I'm doing fine, man. How you doing? Doing I'm... very well. Thank you very much for being with us. Tell us a little bit about uh, where the Combine was when you first saw NFL Combines back in the early 80s to what they've become now. Yeah, it was kind of interesting because when they first got the idea to have the Combine, uh, they wanted to split it up in two parts of the country. Uh, I don't understand what Seattle had to do with one part, <laughs> but uh, Dallas was on the other part, and... Uh, I I did both of them, and uh, uh, we the coaches kind of pretty much had to you know hit both of them. The scouts had to hit both of them. The players uh, were split up in two different groups. One group went off to uh, Seattle. One group went off to uh, to Dallas. So therefore, we had to uh, we had to we had to hit them both. But the thing I remember most was the Dallas combine, and it was like uh, 20 degrees, and uh, we were just out there in the old complex which was uh pretty much just a huge shed <laughs> and uh, everybody just froze their tails off and uh i can still remember seeing coach landry with his overcoat on and his hat and you know looking really debonair <laughs> <laughs> and uh he always looked good and uh talking about uh we're gonna have to think about something different on this <laughs> <laughs> wise move on his part i'd say yeah yeah so uh Wow, that was uh, that was rough. Well, now, uh, and then talk about what it's like now. I mean, it's got to be just wild the, the way it's changed. Well, it's you know you got the whole you know the big area, and they come over at certain times. It's probably one of the most boring events <laughs> possible. I mean, it's like watching paint dry. Oh my! Now, what you get on TV, you know, watching the different segments. That's cool, you know. I mean, you get to watch that. But see, there's just a whole lot of dead time in yeah. between. And they're walking around in different uh, rooms doing these different uh, physical tests, psychological tests, all this stuff. And, I mean, they don't hit the field, you know, very often. And, uh, you know, when they come out, it it might be the lineman coming out on one day and the defensive backs and then the linebacker. I mean, it's just very methodical, just uh, – uh, Oh God! Uh, I, you know, somebody said to me the other day, "Go, are you going to go to the combine?" I went, "Are you kidding? I, I, I did that enough. No way." Well, you now know, I, I watch it on TV like everybody else. Yeah, and now you spend all your time getting kids ready for the combine. I know a few years ago you worked with uh, Robert E. Lee uh, quarterback Matt Flynn uh, out of LSU, and uh, he's turned out to be in a situation where he's going to looks like he could make a lot of money this year as a free agent. Yes, uh, uh, I, I've, I've had a lot of fun with the guys. Uh, I can remember the different things that have, that have taken place. Uh, uh, Vince Young, uh, 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 that was a really interesting story because he he went up there and, and you know, his uh, his agent, I actually told him that, you know, you ought to throw, and they told him not to. And, you know, every, every year it's somebody, you know, being told well, not to throw, and I guess this year uh, – Newton, uh, uh, not Newton, but uh, Robert Griffin is not going to throw. Really? Yeah, I don't think he's going to throw at the combine. Huh, okay. Now, who are some of the kids you're working with this year? I have two. Uh, I have uh, uh, Kendall Wright, the Baylor receiver, uh, Mr. Number One, uh, certainly an outstanding talent. Uh, Great hands, great feet, got speed, uh, competitor. And, you know, he was... uh, uh, he, he was RG's uh, number one man. Yeah. And from and Pittsburgh, then I got Texas. Case Keenum, who is, uh, without a doubt, uh, one of the best passers I've ever run across. And, I mean, his certainly his stats prove it. 
and uh, uh, so it's been a lot of fun, uh, you know, working with him and, and uh, getting him ready. Now, how long have you started? How long have you been working with these two guys? Uh uh, since January, okay. and uh, I, this, you know, this is not like an everyday process. I mean, I go down there and I spend three days, and we, you know, we we work all day, and you know, get you know, do this, do that, and and then you know, then I leave and come back, and skip a week, and then come back. I'm due to I'm due to come back uh, 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 this next week. I see. Now, Kendall writes from Pittsburgh, Texas. He's not too far away from us in Tyler, so we're obviously very interested. What kind of things are you working on uh, with him on right now to get him in a position to really excel at the Combine? Well, Baylor has their way of doing things, and I, I got great respect for that coach there, and I've known him, I've known him ever since he was in high school because we tried to recruit him when I was at Tulsa as a coach. We tried to recruit him to go to Tulsa, but he went to Houston. And, uh, and of course, that paid off for him because he later on became a head coach at Houston and then parlayed that into Baylor, and he's done a, he's done a great job there. Um, but I, I will uh, – the things that I do to get these guys ready uh, is, uh, you know, the interviews that they're going to have, the, the drills they're going to go through, uh, uh, the, uh, and then the passing – uh, thing that they do, and and that's a difficult thing because they have like uh, they have a groups like group one, group two, group three, and they come out there and they they go through all these different little you know things, and then they come down and they line up in a line. The receiver comes up, quarterback comes up, and they have you know they they throw the first route, which is a slant, and the quarterback throws two routes, but the receiver catches the ball, goes back and gets in line, and then he comes up and he you know he gets a court, different quarterback every time comes up and and runs a different route and and uh it's very uh well i mean if you watch it on tv i mean it looks really interesting on tv but out there it's a very uh tedious situation for the players because they're standing back there filling their fingers and uh going oh god you know and they're watching everybody and it's just really slow motion Tell me a little bit about uh, the the transformation you have to make, the work you have to do with a guy like Case Keenum. Now that these guys are running out of the spread offenses so much, how much uh, work do you have to do with them on footwork, taking the snap from center, all these things that used to be standard operating procedure for quarterbacks, they just don't do anymore. Well, I've do, I've been you know uh, I, I've been doing this ever since I retired, and that's the number one goal is to you know, get them uh, under, to understand where, you know, the three, five, seven step drop and, you know, to what you're looking at and from, you know, from a different angle. And, um, I, you know, these guys are really good athletes. This, this is not like uh, some kind of magic thing. Uh, you know, there's little things that you can pick up on. Like I picked up on um, last year I was working uh, 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 with Andy Dalton and I picked up on the fact that, uh, when he threw to his left, he was kind of, he wasn't like right on target every time. And so I'm sitting there watching him, and I'm going, Andy, I, I can tell you right now what, what you're doing. And, you know, this, and, and it's so funny because Case Keenum was doing exactly the same thing. When they look to their left, they, 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 they don't turn their head quick enough. And so as a result, they don't pick up their target. They, they pick up their target as, as they're throwing the ball rather than picking up their target and then throwing the ball. Okay, okay. Whereas on the right, their, their, their vision, the right part of the, of the field is already in their vision. So how hard is it to get them to break those habits? Uh, you just stay after them. I mean, these guys are very intelligent, uh, highly competitive guys. They listen to everything you say, and they work hard. And it's not hard, but uh, you got to remind them. Uh, and then the other thing is, you know, they'll pick up their foot, uh, and move it to you know, and fall step, or they'll have their foot up in the air. I don't know where the, I don't know where all these kids today are getting this thing of having their foot up in the air. Uh, <laughs> they go to these camps, and I'm not a big camp guy because I just don't think they get very good coaching there. But uh, some guy comes along and says, "Okay, everybody, put their left foot up in the air. You know, heel. I mean, the heel, heel up, and that will enable you to get." And so everybody does it. And then it's not good. I mean, I catch this stuff all the time when I'm working. I work with kids as young as 10 years old. Wow. And, uh, you know, I got a website, and 
uh, jerryrome.com, and uh, these kids, uh, you know, parents call me and contact me, but I bet I got 20 20 kids around the state of Texas that I work with. That's a, and, and these are high school kids? and, and oh, I, 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 Like I say, I work with kids as young as 10 years old. Man, wow. I mean, it's like, uh, you know, it's like we, we see the story of, uh, of Tiger Woods learning to play golf when he's like 8 years old. You know what I mean? Right, right. The swing, the swing. Well, football's the same way. And, and, and I think any earlier than 10 is kind of tough on them, but... Uh, uh, if you teach them young enough, you're teaching them the right fundamentals, the right footwork. And, and most of these guys that are in this spread, going back to your original question, most of these guys that are in this spread have at some time gone from under the center. So it's not like, oh, golly, I've never done this in my life. Sure. Now, okay, i got to ask you uh, your opinion, uh, because he was the most polarizing guy in football this past year. What do you think of Tim Tebow? I think that this man is is got something that uh, that uh, it's called it's called a competitive spirit, and uh, a competitor who just has it down in inside of him that he's the uh, Tim Tebow must be one of the most competitive young men that ever lived because you know he reaches down in there and he's and if he's not doing well when it comes time to 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 make the play he does it. And 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 that is that is nothing but competitive spirit, the the the, the belief that you can do it. So and that's what he has, and it's great that he's a great Christian, and and he's got. Uh, I mean, this man is not saying that that you know God makes him a good player. You know, that's not that's not what this man is saying. He's saying he is doing it through the power of the fact that he believes in God mm-hmm. and Christ. And then he's doing it through the power of his belief. Not that they're doing it, but because he falters too. I mean, I, this is not the first quarterback. I, I was uh, I, one of the very first pros I worked with was Jim Zorn. He was a really, really strong Christian, and I loved him. And he was a very talented kid. He, he's been coaching in the NFL for quite a few years now. He's at Kansas City. And, um, uh, you know, he went to, you know, he, he was very... Uh, very uh, uh, forward about how he felt, you know. There wasn't anything wrong with that, you know. Sure. No, I, my question, I guess, goes to, you know, obviously everybody, there's there's so many people who criticize the way he throws the wall and, and is he accurate enough? Is he ever going to be uh, a really good quarterback or once defenses start adjusting to him, is it, is it all going to go away? I mean, what do you think about the, his mechanics and, and does he need to be fixed? Can he be fixed? Can he turn into an elite you, quarterback? You're not going to change his delivery. He's got a little bit of a wind-up. I've seen it. Uh, actually, I go back. Sonny Jurgensen, one of the greatest passers in the history of the NFL, had a sidearm delivery. Yes. And and Joe Theismann, who took the Redskins to uh, two Super Bowls, had a same kind of wind up thing that Tebow does. It's kind of a it's kind of a deal where they drop the ball down uh, and it goes right across the top of the hip and back up again. And it's kind of like a roll, a little wind-up motion. But they, they do it and they time it uh, where it comes out at the right time. Now, I think personally, I think personally that you could, uh, that you could uh, have a better, quicker delivery if you didn't do that. But to break that is impossible. So do you think he can continue to play the way he plays now? Of course. And be an elite quarterback? Well, he's already. (laughs) I mean, come on, man. I mean, wow. I I, I, Listen, I'm just asking the question. I work with Vince Young. You know, the very first thing that that they did with Vince Young and me, they go, well, let's see if you can, you know, get him corrected on his throwing. And I went out and and threw it. I I went, what am I supposed to correct here? (laughs) What am I supposed to correct? Well, he's got a little bit of side. I go, you think I'm going to mess with that? I mean, you want to ruin him? <laughs> and, I and said, here's how what we do. We teach him. We teach him how to play the game. That's what you do. You teach him how to play the game. Of all the people that you've worked with, who would you consider to be um, the the most special? Your you're the one you're most proud of. Uh, that you've helped to uh, become a good pro? Well, 
I'm, I'm going to answer this in a couple questions, a couple ways. First place, the greatest player that I was quarterback I was ever on the field with, as far as when I was playing, was Roger Staubach. There you go. Okay, Roger was something else now, and unfortunately, I had to compete against him, and <laughs> he sent me on the road. <laughs> I end up uh, ended up in Cleveland when he came out of the Navy, uh, but that that man, and I also competed with him in an All Star game, and he was uh, he was just a fabulous player. But coaching wise. The, the three, uh, well, okay, the best two quarterbacks I ever worked with was Warren Moon Ooh. and Troy Aikman. Wow. Hall of Famers. Yeah, and but the, but the one that came out of the woodwork that I believed in right off and nobody else did was Kurt Warner. Kurt Warner, and you worked with him, and, and nobody else was buying him at the time, huh? No, no, actually, actually I left St. Louis, and they were going to put him on the expansion draft and nobody wanted him. Wow! And the next and the next summer, their number one quarterback goes down, and they stick they stick Warner in the game, <laughs> and he he tears them up, and and you know the rest is history. Did you write a bunch of I told you so's to a bunch of people? No, I didn't. <laughs> you should have. You should have. No. Hey, Jerry, tell me uh, where people can find out about you again. You mentioned your website and uh, yeah, Jerry Rome, uh, R H O M E dot com. Okay. Uh, pretty simple. But I work with kids. Uh, I got a ton of kids in Texas, all over Texas, and uh, and uh, I got you know I, I, I for some reason uh, North Carolina and South Carolina have got a lot of quarterbacks. Wow. Yeah, and so I'm in Georgia, and so uh, I work with those guys. But uh, I've had a lot of fun working with all ages, and I you know I don't care how old they are. I, I know how to teach them. Well, obviously you do, and you've been at it for a long time, and you're very good at it. And we can't tell you how much we appreciate being able to visit with you. What I'd like to do some other time is give you a call and kind of reminisce on your days with the Cowboys and, and just talk a little bit about your playing days as well because uh, you've got so many stories to tell, I know. Well, you, you know, you call me back sometime, and I'll tell you the story about the, the day that I was in the room with uh, – Tom Landry when he got fired. Oh, oh man. Okay. Well, uh, I can't tell you that now. You have to call me back. I'll, I'll call. I'll call you back for that one. I promise, Jerry. I was in the room. Oh man. I okay. It was just me and him. Hey, go ahead. Tell the story. I got time. No, no. I have to, <laughs> I have to hold it out on you. All right. Fine. Then I'll call you back in a few weeks. <laughs> Otherwise, you you know you may not ever call me back. No, you know that I'll call you back. I want to hear this. Hey, Jerry, thank you very much for being on the show. We really do appreciate it. And if you ever get in the uh, Tyler area, we sure wish you'd come by, okay? Well, I've got friends in that area. And, uh, and of course, I love Texas. And I love, I mean, I'm, I'm, I mean, I love Texas. And that's where I'm from. And the uh, reason why I live in Georgia, because it was the last team I coached for was, uh, uh, was the Falcons when I retired. But actually, I went back and worked for the Vikings, but uh, just just for the season. And uh, so, uh, but... I just decided I love my home, I love my neighbors, and I love the city and all that, so I decided to stay here, and if I'm going to go visit friends, I'll just get on the airplane. There you go. Well, we do appreciate you taking time to talk to us, and we look forward to talking to you again in the, in the real near future. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Thank yes, you sir. for inviting Thank me on the show. You bet. Jerry Rome on Brian Houston Sports Radio Live on 99.3 Talk FM. Hey, Coach. This is a Sports Radio Live podcast covering your world of sports. Brian Houston Sports Radio Live. It's weekdays at 3 on 99.3 Talk FM, the talk of East Texas.